when we monitor animal populations or try to understand some ecological phenomena, we need to build statistical models. Mixed models are powerful tools that we use to assess our research questions. Yet it isn't always straightforward as to how we parameterize or build these models. One choice we face with mixed models is whether we fit variables as fixed effects or random effects. A fixed effect is the M in Y equals MX plus B or beta coefficients in statistical models. Random effects are drawn from the theoretical population of effects, which is alpha here. And there's a lot out there on making this choice. In ecology, fixed effects are often variables of interest or environmental covariates that you can expect to have some consistent relationship with your response variable. Random effects are often used to cluster data that come from non-independent groups. So you might sample the same site multiple times or collect multiple samples across a few years. A response variable often has no consistent relationship with the year or site. But instead, each year or site might deviate from the overall mean of the survey time period or larger location. That is, the effect of each site might be drawn from a theoretical region-wide distribution with a mean and variance. And one advantage of this is your model only has to estimate two parameters, mean and variance, instead of the number of sites minus one. When we fit these grouping variables as fixed effects, we essentially create a dummy variable for each level and independently estimate coefficients for each of those levels, leading to many, many unrelated estimates. But there are many other advantages of fitting these grouping variables as random effects. One important use of random effects is that one can estimate population level mean and variance metrics that allow one to generalize to an unobserved level, such as an unmeasured site or an unmeasured year. If you're interested in estimating these population level metrics, it only makes sense that you need a minimum number of levels of that random effect, especially in estimating the variance. And a common rule of thumb is that one needs at least five levels, in other words, five sites or five years in order to estimate these. Yet little empirical data have been published to support this rule. And to assess this, I simulated ecological data sets by drawing values from known distributions and calculating a response with the linear predictor. And then I then asked how well linear mixed effects models do in extracting these true values from the data. And indeed, if we simulate data where we have a known random effects variance, we can see that as one increases the number of levels of a random effect here on the x-axis, we approach the true value, which is the dotted line on the y-axis. Yet, what if one is not interested in these random effects estimates? That is, you may use random effects to control for nuisance variation or to group non-independent data. If I only want to understand the fixed effects estimates in my model, is it okay to use year as a random effect when I only have three? So one important way to assess fixed effects estimates is by looking at coverage. Coverage tells you what proportion of the simulated data sets and corresponding models included the true value within the estimated 95% confidence interval. So we typically expect this number to be around 0.95 if the model is correctly identifying your coefficients. In this plot, coefficient, uh, sorry, coverage is on the y-axis and the number of random effects levels is on the x-axis. There are two columns in this plot. The first is a relatively small effect size and the second column includes coverage for a relatively larger effect size. So that's just to see if the strength of the fixed effect included makes a difference here in the estimation. The shapes and line type denote whether the grouping variable, so site or year as our running examples, was fit as a fixed effect, which are circles and solid lines, or as random effects, which are triangles and dotted lines. And lastly, the colors of the points and lines here depict the overall sample size of the simulated data set. And what we see is that in nearly all situations, coverage is around the expected 0 0.95, with the only exception being when random effects were used with small sample sizes, so n equals 30. And this was regardless of the number of levels of random effects used. RMSE, or root mean square error, can be used to look at the relative difference between the observed data and the expected values. So an estimate's better if it has a lower RMSE, which is on the y-axis. What we see is that higher sample sizes lead to better RMSE values, which is to be expected. But in nearly all cases, the difference between using random effects or fixed effects for a grouping variable was non-existent. The one exception is with low sample sizes and high random effects levels. In other words, few replicates per random effect level. 
And the take home here is that there's no harm in using random effects when you have fewer than five levels, if you are not interested in making inferences about those random effects, but instead are interested in the other fixed effect coefficients in your model. Best practices, however, are to simulate data representative of your own and assess this for your own projects. Thanks. <laughs>